So this is going to be a bit late because this is a comment from a day ago. At the vets now, they want to take her puppies. She's at a level of 5.5. Her first AI was on 3.2 and the last one was on 3.6. Don't want to lose puppies. Any thoughts? Don't give us anywhere enough information here. So tell me what's the critical thing that you do if, you, if you, you've got a progesterone level of 5.5. What else would you want to know? What else would I want to know? Yep. If she's nesting, if she's panting, did she quit eating? And, and she's her temperature. Well, yeah, always the temperature. temperature. We do it a week before the first breeding due date. So the big thing to me <clears> is the, probably the most useful thing, not always reliable, and and not as reliable as a progesterone test. So the rule is this: progesterone level of less than well, three, it's okay to take Yeah. You need to know the exact date that you bred the dog. Well, we do. It was okay. th between three, two, and three, then six. You do a week before that first breeding due date. A week before that, take the temperature once a day. Once it reaches 99, then you do it twice a day. Then you know exactly when your temperature drops. Well, when Tammy talk, says 99, she's talking about 99.0 or thereabouts. So, yeah. so basically 99.2 or something. Start taking. Here's the problem. There's normally a nice temperature rise. Quite often it goes to a temperature drop and you miss it. Right. So that's why Tammy is saying to do it twice a day, which is right. So the th the, here's the stuff you don't give us, Stephanie, in this piece of information. How many puppies on board? If you've got a small oh, litter, yeah. one or two puppies, it's because you AI wrong. And consequently, you will now get your C-section date wrong. So I suspect you have a small litter coming and 3-6 was your last AI date, but in fact that was still early. And so that would put your potential uh, potential whelp date as something after 5-6. Um, and I'm not sure what the date was a day ago. But the whole point here is you can really get in trouble with this. Specifically with the progesterone level of 5.5, I would not be doing a C-section unless her temperature drops, she's showing out with signs of being in labor, panting, nesting, not eating food. So. I keep harping about this, and the reason that we, Tammy and I, keep harping about this is 10% of puppies, something like that, are born early with bad consequences. Not all of them, that doesn't mean they're all going to die, but you can really put and, yourself into a difficult situation. And you've situation. got a video on this. Oh, I've got lots of videos on this. Yeah, and five. I can send videos to customers and they still question about it, and it's like... Well, so part of the problem here is, is you go to the vet and you assume the vet knows what the right answer is. And then the vet says or silly things. Or they complain about getting progesterone tests again and again and again. It is costly, so you need to prepare yourself. What, what's the most costly? Yourself. What's the most costly thing? Not having, oh, when having you get lose puppies. your babies. Heartache, financial right. ruin. I mean, not ruin, but you know, financial implications, and emotional the stress. Heartache, heartache yeah. on the Lo mama dog. Lots of work. Yeah, down. absolutely. And look, so I hear things from vets. Conversations like this. I won't be around Sunday. We need to take these puppy Saturday. Or Friday. Yeah, or Friday. Yeah, yeah, best have a plan B because... Well, you always have plan A, plan B. Every time... We do. Two weeks before the first breeding due date, I call. We have about four vets that I call. I make sure that they're going to be in town if they take the emergency call. And then that way it narrows it down to one or two vets in case I get in a stuck emergency. Right. Right. And you, you've got to find your vets. Now, I'm not advocating this. I think you're better off trying to do a natural birth and taking puppies early. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't advocate either one of those things. But I hate the idea of, of just taking puppies with a progesterone level of 5.5 because it's convenient. That is not a good situation. Um, Matt, I have a puppy who is a runt, looks premature not much fur and bony and skinny. I've been hand feeding her every two hours. You probably need to be tube feeding her. Anyway, now day six, mum has decided she won't toilet her anymore, only toilet the others. Her tummy's always fat on the sides, even when she hasn't eaten. How do I get her to pee? So the first thing is, is that, you know, it may be that she's not pooping, that you should be giving her an enema. Second thing is, is that um, if you're making the milk too rich, not enough water, you can dehydrate a puppy and produce hard stools that she can't produce, and also less urine output. 
So I would put, I would be tube feeding with a more watery solution more frequently. Typically, you tube feed 10 ounce puppy, 10 cc's or 10 mils every three hours. Um, and I would maybe up the water content a little bit to see if you can't get Say more Say that again, a 10 ounce puppy. 10 ounce puppy gets 10 mils every three hours. Okay. Five ounce puppy gets five mils every three hours. A 15 okay. ounce puppy gets 15 Don't mils. Don't get it backwards. Don't get it backwards, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. Um, That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, gotcha, right. Um, yeah. Now, mum is not feeding this puppy. She knows that something's up. Doesn't mean you should give up on the puppy. May have other problems with this puppy. May have internal problems. Might have a liver shunt. Things that you can't do anything about. Look, remember, you know, people say, what do you do? You can't do surgery on a one, two, three week old puppy. That is just not happening. There's no way that anybody is going to be able to do any kind of surgery. All you can do on puppies that are in trouble is give them antibiotics if they need it. Give them oxygen if they're not breathing properly. Keep them warm, have an incubator. If they're, uh, um, if they're not feeding, tube feed them. Those are the only things that you can do. There's not much else that you can do or that I know about. Um, if, I'm, if somebody's got some suggestions, pipe in here. But uh, you're limited on what you can do. Grouchy Smurf says, what is considered ovulation with a one fo fine care machine? something around a seven but it's not reliable this is the problem if you've got a seven and it the next day you've got a 12 you've been past ovulation on a seven if you've got a seven and the next day you're at an eight your pop dog probably hasn't ovulated what you want to see is the day after ovulation a 70 percent or something like that increase in numbers so you might see a seven and an eight and a seven and a ten you know, maybe the dog's ovulated, then all of a sudden the 10 goes to a 17. That dog ovulated. Hello, I have a six month old male. This is Alex Mendoza. I'm looking to breed. My question is at what age should I get his sperm checked? Well, what you got to do here is a six months. Uh, that would be the limit. I think seven months by the AK. Is that right, Tammy? Seven months? Seven the months is AKC will accept it. AKC won't accept for AKC registration uh, a litter that's been conceived from a male that's before seven months, younger than seven months old. Yeah. Right. So w you need uh, to start practicing when it's six months old. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you try. I mean, typically you dogs six months old aren't going to do much. If right. it doesn't look just real great, then wait two weeks, try it again. Yep. So start. So I wouldn't get any kind of a. When sperm. I say practice, pulling from the dog. Yeah, getting him in front of a female, hopefully a female that's maybe even in heat, just you know, getting him used to this whole situation. Yeah. See whether you can get him to perform for you. What you'll find is the first few times, he just spits a little bit into a cup. Maybe it's got some color to it, great. Maybe it doesn't, fine. Not much point in doing anything until you start to produce some volume, a cc or more, a millimeter or a milliliter or more. And um, what you will see is it'll have some kind of cloudiness to it, which means you're on the right track. And uh, maybe at that point you can get a semen analysis done. Sipping on Boona. You're a wealth of knowledge, can't wait to see what else you posted. Well, we've got lots of stuff there. Uh, Zaza Bullies. What is the DNA for a Rojo French Bulldog? Rojo's a... It's a chocolate. A testable chocolate. Testable chocolate, yes. Little bee, little bee. Brown, they're calling brown chocolate, cocoa chocolate. Uh, there's so many freaking different names, it's just. I know, I, I don't like these names. Yeah. I like DNA. So, to me. Um, I don't know who changes them, but when they do, it just messes everybody up. Well, it gets confusing. So, yeah. see, I'm confused. So, your DNA will tell you exactly what you got. Yeah, so a. a According to Tammy and me, from what we understand people are trying to say about this, a Rojo would be a little B, little B dog, would have a red eye glow. Versus a little CO, little CO dog, which would be what we used to call untestable chocolate, would I now call Coco, also would have a red eye glow. And not a dog Did they used to call that a testable chocolate, little CO, little CO? No, it's called untestable. Okay, that's you what I, I thought you said testable. Okay. Uh, I meant to say untestable. Little CO, little CO is chocolate. It's cocoa. <coughs> cocoa, sorry. It used to be called untestable. Right. And then a dog that has both two of both copies, little CO, little CO, little B, little B, would be a new shade. So you've got cocos, rojos, and new shades. A 
of which cocoa is the most prevalent, most common, little, little, little co, little co. Next one would be a dog that is little b, little b. Not anywhere near as common, probably five to one ratio. Testable. Testable, yeah. Then the last one would be a combination of both, which we're going to call a new shade, and that one is pretty rare still. Yeah. Quite sought after. Well, the new shade has two copies of everything. Yes. Exactly. Little B, little B, little right. B, little B. The video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Mm -hmm.